Thanksgiving football. Thanksgiving football has been around for many years, longer than just about all of us have been alive. And we have so many memories over the past couple of decades, good, bad, and we plan to just discuss what we've enjoyed, what we'd like to see done differently, some of the games we find most memorable, players, even details on the broadcast, announcers. Uh, there's a lot to think of and a lot that's changed over the years. For me, the first thing I think of is John Madden, like most people. If I think of just one person that comes to mind, it would be John Madden. But then you can't really separate John Madden from Pat Summerall. Right. And then you got your two locations. You have Detroit and Dallas. And I think, getting back to Madden for a moment, he's the one that really makes it memorable because he actually brought the Thanksgiving turkey into the game. He just made it fun. He made the game fun while at the same time being an analyst. And it's something that we've never had since. I mean, there's never going to be another John Madden, but right. who, who's going to make who's going to make the game fun at the same time? It's just you have so many people pushing nowadays to be exciting, to try and be entertaining. And John Madden did it without trying. He just was, in many ways, the best part of the game because a lot of times you don't even remember the games. You remember Madden. And we've gone back and watched old games. And sometimes the best part is listening to Madden and Summer all go back and forth and the things you just wouldn't hear on a broadcast anymore. Right, unscripted and unique, and just made Thanksgiving games especially very memorable, like you said, with the turkey or turducken, awarding it to the players at the end of the game, having them take a drumstick and get interviewed afterwards and get the trophy later on uh, for winning the game itself made it a special experience that can't be matched now. I like what you said about Madden being unscripted. And that's a fear for many broadcasts. It worked for John Madden and knowing when not to go too far and not be a total distraction from the game and still having this good blend of you could say, humor and analysis that made, made it enjoyable for you know, whoever was watching the game. So I'd say just right there, it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been the same when you have someone like Pat Summerall who was announcing Super Bowls back in the 70s. He announced Super Bowls over four different decades back when John Madden was actually coaching. And they, they were just the best. There's just never going to be anything uh, like those two. And then just all the years they worked together and I think many would say that the dream team was Al Michaels and John Madden, but to me, just Madden and Summerall was as good as it gets. Some would say that maybe Summerall was almost a little understated at times, and I could see that. While Madden was just out there and up front, and he was such a dominating personality, they were just the perfect team announcing team and what have we had over all these years we've had on Fox 
until this year, it's been Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. So we don't have Joe Buck and Troy Aikman anymore since they moved to ESPN. And we're left with Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson doing the game. And then on CBS, Jim Nance with Phil Simms until the last couple of years. And now they've got Tony Romo. And I think we all know why they have Tony Romo there to help to promote the Cowboys. <laughs> and not to get off Thanksgiving, but I have to say this because how has just the NFL changed when it comes to telecasts? CBS would always have the AFC games and Fox would always have the NFC games. Today, this week in the NFL, our own local games that run TV here in the afternoon Raiders at Broncos on Fox and Cowboys at Vikings on CBS you had AFC AFC on Fox and you had NFC NFC on CBS and even reminds me of the playoffs last year with the 49ers at Cowboys on CVS. I mean, that didn't happen since, I want to say, 1993, which was the last year Madden and Summer all were on CVS before that they, they made the big move to Fox. <laughs> so a lot's changed with the experience and just what you've come to expect with the games on Fox and CBS. But let's get into some of the games. What are some games that are memorable to you over the years? Which ones stand out? And we could we could approach this a couple ways. You can think of uniforms because we also we always think of uniforms, or we can just think of the games themselves. Even though I don't think we can ever escape the uniforms. Right. For me, I don't think there is one specific game that stands out as being more noteworthy above others. Just the Cowboys home game in the afternoon in Dallas, whatever opponent may be, I do remember some better than others. Yeah, for me, I have a couple games that come to mind, and they're all from years ago because there haven't been, in my opinion, any memorable games, whether they're two good teams coming together or games that were really high quality on the field. But my first game is the 1993 snow game in Dallas Dolphins at Cowboys and what do we have in that game is well, are, is anyone expecting snow in Dallas no so you get snow on AstroTurf because you have the open roof there and I miss Texas Stadium they would say now that would be a good thing that that wouldn't happen because the roof's closed unless they choose to open it but that made for one of the most memorable games regular season games thanksgiving games for me personally right and we watched it on a replay since we weren't yet watching football live except for little small pieces being so young at this point, but just watching the replay even, you could tell it was very unique and special game. And there's the Leon Lett comes in at the end of the game. Leon Lett's remembered for a couple goofs and blunders in his career. That was one of them. And then there was the Super Bowl play that didn't matter in the blowout versus the Bills. It went right down at the end, too. It wasn't just because there was snow. I remember because we didn't, we were 
a little too young to see the game live. I remember seeing the replays. I'm like, Cowboys and Dolphins. Well, it wasn't snowing in Miami. Then it has to mean it snowed in Dallas. And of course they're playing in Dallas in Thanksgiving. It snowed in Dallas. So I was, just had to say, i got to see that game sometime. Just have to see it for the weather. And it was a, a pretty good game, actually. Dan Marino didn't play in it. It was Steve DeBerg who outplayed Troy Aikman that day. And, and keep in mind, that was the year the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Good color matchup. You had... Oh, just a once in a lifetime type of game there that for me we're not going to see anything like it again that's one of them and then the second one which I don't really remember I just have a vague memory of it but also seeing some of the replay of it was the Cowboys again hosting the Packers in 1994 and this was another game with starting quarterbacks out, Troy Aikman. And it turned out to be really the defining moment of Jason Garrett's career, coming in as the backup, taking over for Troy Aikman, and defeating the Packers because you're thinking, well, Brett Favre is on the other side of the field. The Packers are also a very good team, though they were, this was before they were winning or getting to a Super Bowl. But they were one of those teams on the rise. And Brett Favre was becoming one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And Garrett leads them to victory, his big triumphant moment. I really like that because you had two traditional teams, two historical teams, and you put two good teams on the field, which we don't get to see very often. And you could say something about the uniforms. Nothing unusual, just the best that they could put forth at that time. Cowboys, white on silver pants, Packers, green on yellow pants. And as we've said on our other uniform reviews and episodes... At this point, we considered the uniforms to be as refined and smoothed out as possible. The logos, the design, everything. So that, on top of the fact that they're so well-designed in the first place, made it such a great game to watch. Yeah, it was an alternate for the Cowboys. It was that 94 season. But what I enjoyed about those alternates, even though, again, I'm not saying in any way they're better than the regular Cowboys uniform, Mm -hmm. that you still had the helmet. You still had the great silver helmet for the Cowboys. Unchanged, it was really an update. It's really just the silver helmet instead of the white with a few tweaks on there from that 60s Cowboys uniform because I personally don't like the white helmet very much, and I think we're very alone in that. It's, I think, the best you can make that 60s uniform with the silver helmet. And as we complain about often, we actually get silver pants, not the bluish, metallic, silver pants. You're actually getting straight silver pants for the Cowboys if they're going to wear an alternate, that's the alternate I would like to see them wear right. over anything else. And nothing needs to be said about the Packers. The Packers are, hands down, the best uniform in football. Get, may make the argument for all of sports. Right. So that's the second one that I, I do actually have a faint memory going way back, seeing a little bit of it being young. And then the last one was the 1998 game, Cowboys hosting the Vikings. And everyone knows it's a Randy Moss game. Right. Where Randy Moss just took over and was a star. 
and the Vikings dominated the game, and this was also marked really the end of the Cowboys. Uh, dominance in the 90s. I mean, it had already been over, but, you know, it was the... You had those core players that were still there, but the rest of the team really was not the same. You know, Randall Cunningham, when he was not running, like you and I didn't get to see him when he was with the Eagles running around. I just think of Randall Cunningham as more of a pocket quarterback bombing it. Right. And he threw a great deep ball. I mean, that whole 98 season, I think it was one of the great disappointments ever with the Vikings not facing the Broncos in the Super Bowl. Instead, you got, well, one of those hot teams like the Falcons who got in who really shouldn't have got to the Super Bowl. And it was a bad Super Bowl. Another Madden Summerall game. I mean, it was just a kick watching it and listening to them both there. And I think what what all these three games have in common is Dallas. I, I miss Texas Stadium. The new stadium in Texas to me is a dud for a lot of reasons. Overhyped, overrated. We'll get to that at another point. And we really didn't see much of the early game growing up in Detroit, in the Silverdome. And that was because the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was usually on during the morning. And it wasn't until later in the mid-2000s that we started tuning into that more, and it was... At Ford Field, it was a different experience, just like with Texas Stadium being brighter than AT&T Stadium. Now, it was the same with Detroit being brighter with the Silver Dome and becoming darker inside of Ford Field. I just remember, I think it was 2006, Lions hosting the Falcons, Michael Vick being the quarterback of the Falcons, and... I remember that game a little bit, some games against the Packers, but not as many when it comes to the early game with the Lions hosting. Yeah, this is where we can go in another direction as maybe my number one problem with the Thanksgiving game is the actual matchups. I'll back up a little bit and talk about Detroit don't have as many memories at the Silver Dome, but we have seen far more Fort Field, and I just think of a kind of sleepy start to the day at Ford Field. I think that's another stadium that they blew it with. It's not a good experience. I haven't been there in person, but it's not a good viewing experience on TV, that's for sure. Right. my big problem is okay we have these two teams and we're, we're talking about historically now before they've added the third game in so we're still talking about the 90s primarily and then to about the 2005 or so they introduced 2006 was the year that they added the Thursday night game which I honestly thought it was eight or nine. I didn't think it went back that far. Mm -hmm. But in Detroit, they began playing football on Thanksgiving in 1934. In Dallas, it was 1966. And we can't talk about those. Sure, we can look up information and scores and matchups. My number one problem here with the Thanksgiving Day games is every year we know the Lions are bad. There was a reason to watch the Lions in the 90s. Barry Sanders. He could single-handedly make a defense look silly. There's never been anyone like him since. There were a few other good players on the Lions. Herman Moore for a couple years. Even had Herman Moore starting lineup. 
the Lions at least made it to the playoffs several times. But after Barry Sanders retired, there really wasn't any reason to watch the Lions. It was painful to watch the Lions on Thanksgiving, and eventually the only reason to watch the Lions was because of Calvin Johnson. Now the Lions don't have anything. They have nothing out there that's worth going out of your way to see. And then getting back to your point, it wasn't necessarily that we were so interested in the Cowboys growing up. It was we were also doing other things in the morning. Right. So the afternoon was more free, and we'd end up just catching more of that game. Uh, But getting back to the matchups, the Lions we know are bad every year. The Cowboys are usually competitive, at least. My complaint with the Cowboys is they haven't won anything. They haven't even been, they haven't even made it to a championship game, a conference championship title game since 1995. That needs to be said. 1995 was the last time. I'm not talking about even reaching a Super Bowl. Just getting into the conference championship. That is how insignificant the Cowboys are. If you're just saying, well, competitive, sure, they've been competitive. They've been in the playoff hunt. They've made it to the divisional and wildcard round a good lot of times. But how many more teams can we come up with since 1995 that are more significant than the Cowboys? Half the league, at least, you can make the argument for half the league. All the teams that have made to the championship games and Super Bowls, if not once, multiple times. But with that said, the Cowboys have been the better team, and they usually get a lesser opponent. The Lions are always among the weakest teams, if not the weakest team, and they get the better opponent. (laughs) There's something wrong with that. You brought up that we've seen the Packers face the Lions a a couple of times, whether that be Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers. It's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. We've seen uh, Peyton Manning and his Colts in the 2000s go to Detroit. We've seen Tom Brady and the Patriots go to Detroit. And then this year, in many people's opinions, the Super Bowl favorites, the Buffalo Bills, go to Detroit. (laughs) While the Cowboys occasionally get a good team. And even when they get teams that are supposed to be bad and even are mediocre, they find a way to lose the game. And screw it up on Thanksgiving anyway. And I'm saying, well, if you want to get good games on Thanksgiving, it's not necessarily you have to have two Super Bowl competitors, but can you at least give the Cowboys a playoff caliber team to face? Not not some 500 or below 500 team. Right. Like the Giants. Did anyone think the Giants would have a good record this year? Can't imagine. No one. It was just, well... They won't be a laughing stock this year. They won't be a, a basement team this year. Well, they actually have a winning record. Do I think they're really that good? Am I convinced? Not really, but they're improved. But you know, almost every year I feel like, oh, there's another sucker for the Cowboys to face, or oh, just put Washington in there, put the Raiders in there a couple times when they're really just so-so and when you sneak in as a wild card a lot of times you're not good especially because a wild card doesn't mean much anymore right I mean you could argue we don't even need a wild card in the NFL we're big fans to say get to the divisional round right get to the divisional round because that's where the playoffs that that's when you get to the actual quality games where you've eliminated all these bottom feeder teams. Right. Sure, we can point out a few exceptions, but usually you can just jump to the conference, I mean, divisional playoffs. So I've been very disappointed by the opponents that they send up to Detroit. And I get the thinking. It's, well, the Lions are so bad, you've got to put 
some stars on the field against them. Well, if that's the thinking, then maybe it's time that you don't have the Lions on Thanksgiving anymore. Right. And then for the Cowboys, well, we want the Cowboys to look as good as possible. We want them to destroy the competition. And it doesn't matter who's on against the Cowboys because it's in Dallas. Everyone's going to be watching. You know, that's how the NFL looks at it. That's how Fox and CBS view it. But that sets up bad games. And I would propose that we don't need to have those two teams on every year. I'm not saying they shouldn't be on at all. Could they maybe rotate it? Could they do Dallas this year and pick another team and then the next year have Detroit and someone else instead of Dallas? Yeah. Or maybe they could just put the Cowboys and Lions against each other and give us another game. Yeah. And what are your thoughts about the the evening game? It was very strange to us when they first introduced it just from the standpoint of having just the Detroit and Dallas game for so long and having a third game, which to the point of what you've been just talking about, in many cases it was the best matchup of the three now that day and it's pushed to the end of the evening late when a lot of people aren't watching or doing other things the 49ers and ravens probably the most significant one that we have ever watched or paid attention to as best as we could well i don't like it for a couple reasons and that's why I think they should not have the Dallas Detroit on. I say you alternate those two teams every other year and then you pick another team. And, and two, I understand that you want to have a place where weather is not a factor. And that's a big reason why they have Detroit and Dallas. Mm-hmm. But then again, we had that one of the most memorable games being a snow game. Right. You know, and that's. An all-time classic great game because weather was a factor. But I'd like to see that happen and then bring in two other teams. I, I just think three is too much. Three games is too much. And I don't think you also need to start as early. You don't need to start it in, for us 9.30 and then East Coast 12.30 for the first game. Then the second game's... 1 30 or 4 30 right. you could just do what they do on sunday yeah the 10 o'clock game pacific one eastern or a, a 125 130 you could even push it out to 145 445 eastern for the second game if you want to stretch it out a little bit because the nfl is so scared it's like oh you can't have any gaps you right. gotta have football just all day from beginning to end as, as much as I like football, two games is enough. Two games was enough. And that's how I always felt growing up. I never felt, we need another game. Right. Well, we just need a better game. That's, that's it. Part of it is the NFL wants to have games on all day. The other part is it's the NFL's solution to the Dallas and Detroit problem of giving a more competitive game without upsetting and ending the tradition of games every year in Detroit and Dallas. As much as like football too, for people who want to have the big Thanksgiving dinner, just let people focus on the time with family. I mean, it's nice to have in the background while other things are going on. It's I mean, I'm glad to have the Thanksgiving games, but it's okay to not have something on. It's okay to just spend time with family or doing something else. Right. I mean, that was part of it, too, because with the the morning game, it's like, I like to be out. You know, I'm not just going to sit there, and I don't want to just sit there and watch a 
two games back to back right uh, during the day especially many people are stuck inside all the time and hey if you're elsewhere it's not necessary for us that it's so cold or you have really bad weather having a game on or watching a movie is great but if you are able to go out you know i want to go out and that's it we end up kind of going in and out of the games and checking in and out of the games and saying well are we actually going to have a competitive game we and most of the time for us with the lions game we just want to see what's going on with the uniforms half the time and We'll get into that another day with the alternate uniforms that come into play on Thanksgiving. We could do a whole episode just on uniforms for Thanksgiving. Most of the time they're bad. Rarely are they good. But if you're just talking about the quality of the game, it's few that are good. Last year's game was overtime. Cowboys and Raiders. But was I sitting there saying, oh, well, are these Super Bowl teams? Not even close. 